Here's a technicality that sometimes pops up when we're dealing with contour integrals. Let's have a look at the following situation. So back to real valued calculus. Let's calculate the integral from 0 to 1 of dx over x. We know since kindergarten that we can evaluate that as the logarithm of x evaluated at 0 and 1. This thing becomes um, the logarithm of 1 is 0 and then minus, minus infinity. The important part here is that this thing blows up, it diverges. It's an integral which is not defined and an uh, improper integral. Okay. Obviously, what that means is that if we look, for example, at the plot of the function 1 over x, and then we look at the area under the curve from 0 to 1, that means that this area here will blow up as an infinite uh, area. Nothing surprising at all. Let's now ask ourselves a different question. What happens if we calculate the integral from minus 1 to 1 of dx over x? So if we go back to our diagram, we have a second branch here, a, a negative branch. Question is, what will we get? Will we still get a value which is undefined? Or will we get a value which is zero? Because you clearly see there's some symmetry going on and perhaps hopefully these things will, uh, will cancel. So which one of the two is it? Well, if we write down an expression like this, what this will mean conventionally by definition is that we should interpret this definition as something which diverges, which is not defined. Why? Because we should interpret this as two completely separate limiting operations, one for the negative part here and one for the positive part. So this should be read as the limits of a certain value epsilon 1 going towards 0 of the integral from minus 1 to minus epsilon dx over x. And then a completely independent, a completely separate limit of epsilon 2 going towards 0 of the integral from epsilon 2 to 1 dx over x. Now, this first term over here will go towards minus infinity. The second term will go towards plus infinity. But there's no relationship whatsoever between these two limiting procedures. This is why we say that this particular integral is undefined. It's an improper integral which diverges. OK. And again, that's just by definition. Now, how do we express the concept that there is some symmetry going on? Um, that if you look, for example, at a different limiting operation, where you only have the limits of a single value epsilon going towards zero, of the integral from minus one to minus epsilon, and then the integral from epsilon to one. Now, in this particular case, whatever the value of epsilon is, this term will be minus that term. So this will always be equal to zero. And then if you take the limit of epsilon going towards zero, this thing will also be zero. So how can we write down a shortcut for this particular limiting operation with only a single epsilon? Well, we cannot use our conventional definition here of integral because by definition, this means two separate limiting integrals. So therefore, we need to find a new notation for this. And that new notation is the principal value, which we will denote by this PV here in front of our integral from minus 1 to 1 dx over x. So if you see principal value in front of a certain integral, that means that you only have a single limiting operation where you approach the singularity in a symmetric fashion from both directions. And if you don't have principal value, then you need to approach a singularity from both directions completely independently from each other. OK. Now, just to wrap up and to summarize, if you have a certain integral where something fishy is going on with, with a singularity, for example, you could have the situation where the end result is still uh, well behaved and, and converges. Or it could be that you get infinity and that you get a divergent result. In that particular case, you can have a look at the principal value of that integral. 
And then you can have the situation that now the principal value will converge, even though without principal value, you got an undefined result. So that was what we had here with our one over X, but you could still be unlucky and have the situation where the principal value does not uh, converge. This is a small overview of the taxonomy of, of different uh, possibilities to converge and diverge for improper integrals. Finally, so this was just with a singularity at a certain point. You can also apply the same concept to a different type of improper integral. And you look, for example, at the principal value of the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of something. And the PV in front of that tells you that you need to interpret that as the limit of a single value A moving towards infinity of an integral from minus A to plus A and not, as would be the case without the PV sign, as two separate limits, one limit going towards minus infinity and a separate limit going towards plus infinity. Okay, so that's the concept of Cauchy principal value of an integral.